So it is four o'clock. Good afternoon, everyone. I now call to order this meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, April 9th. If Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit could please come forward. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Before we get started, I did want to take a moment to share a comment that I shared with Mr. Saris recently. That is how much I appreciate the staff's work in preparing the contract recommendation exhibits for these meetings. Um, since my time on the board, they have become increasingly helpful. I feel like you all are mind readers because you answer the questions I have before I even ask them. And I greatly appreciate the effort that all staff make who prepare these exhibits for the board's consideration. So I did want to acknowledge that, so thank you. Thank you for those comments. We appreciate them. So uh, the first item, LKO 421-19, Student Athlete Registration System. This is a new competitively bid contract for a student athlete registration system for the Office of Athletics. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $125,000. Great, thank you. So this is one of the contracts I'm most excited about this evening um, because of the efficiencies it provides not only to parents but staff. And I'm revealing my inner geek, but I'm pretty excited <laughs> about this. And um, my questions have to do with this, and I could probably spend the rest of the evening talking to you about it, Dr. Well, we Adams. didn't need to talk about that publicly because you have Mr. McMillian, and you and he could have <laughs> spoken <laughs> offline around this. He was making my presentation for me at Curriculum Committee. Great. It's great. Well, this is exciting. So I do have a few questions, and then I'll turn it over to committee members for any additional questions they have. Um, it's my understanding that this is um, software as a service product. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Terrific. So it's an off-the-shelf system that we are um, purchasing the rights to use. Yes. Would that be we've, accurate? Um, we've used this uh, since 2016, um, where it would not hit, have hit the $25,000 board procurement okay. requirement. But with our ever-growing population, we've done the high school study. We know how many students are going to end up in high school. And we currently have annually over 10,000 student athletes per year. Um, we were estimating that we would soon reach that contract authority limit. So we wanted to be proactive and put this in place. Terrific. Is the integration with BCPS one new, or has this been available to families? It will be new um, because we um, were using it under that threshold. We needed to make sure we have our student data privacy um, agreement signed, and we have that now. So we'll be exploring that with Mr. Corns' team to see how far integrated this can be. We can't get to a point of single sign-on, as you know, because of parent, guardian, and student access all being a little differential in the system. Sure. And one of the features that I found interesting was that it seems that this system will automate the eligibility checks or will make it easier for the eligibility to checks to occur. It does make it, it easier, yes. It, it does. has reporting um, does it internally. You can message parents and students around what's missing, what isn't missing, and it does allow us to run reports on who's eligible and who's ineligible. Great. Is there integration with the grading data then to we, enable um, that feature or no? Um, when you or say integration, we will, we will make sure that um, one system speaks to the other so that the eligibility is current in this system so that it matches what's in um, the student's official grade record. So this system will have access to student grade data then? Yes. Yes. Perfect. That's all I had. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Adams. Board members, any other questions? Okay. Well, this, I'm excited because of the efficiencies this, this offers, and this is new information to me, so it's, sure. it's exciting to learn about it. So thank you. You're welcome. The next item, KSH 325-19, Career and Technology Supplies and Equipment. This is a new cooperative contract for Career and Technology Supplies and Equipment for the Office of Career and Technology Education and Fine Arts. Approval is requested for a nine-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $100,000. And this is a uh, cooperative contract uh, with Howard County Schools. And the reason that it's just nine months is that we're coming in on the end of a five-year agreement, which we expect them to renew uh, next year. If they don't, we will make other arrangements after this uh, uh, January of 2020. Great, thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Shea. Good afternoon. 
Um, you can probably anticipate my first question, which is um, the breakdown of expenditures for equipment versus training. Yep. So um, all the expenditures are for the equipment. The training is included as part of the purchase for the equipment. Terrific. And how many schools will benefit from I do read your mind because I brought that list. So um, the next up in terms of our plans to purchase with this would be for the PLTW program at Owings Mills High School, the construction design management program at Sparrows Point High School, and uh, the PLTW program at Delaney High School would be with the FY19 um, as part of the Perkins funding. And then um, next up for FY20, pending the fall, um, would be Parkville and Franklin, and then depending on the renewal, next would be Woodlawn and Chesapeake. Um, they currently are in place at Hereford, Patapsco, West, Western, Dundalk, Catonsville, and then a few weeks ago um, was delivered to Pikesville High School. Thank you. And is maintenance also covered with, yes. with this contract? Mm -hmm. Terrific. Yep. Another exciting contract. Thank you. Great. Board members, other questions? Ms. Rowe? Yes. What happens when the grant's out and we have this equipment? Is there more grant money eventually to replace it or maintain it? Yes, yeah, so the, this is funded by the Perkins grant, which is renewable, so we do apply for ongoing funding. So this um, is part of a larger CTE expansion program. So once the equipment is purchased, it's purchased. So we would continue to um, seek that funding to support our expansion of CTE programs overall, which this would fall under. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you, Ms. Shea. Next item, LKO 414-19, Board Certified Behavior Analyst. This is a new competitively bid contract for Board Certified Behavior Analysts for the Office of Special Education. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with three recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $1 million. Thank you. Good afternoon, Dr. Wistet. Good afternoon. Um, so I noticed that one of the awarded vendors is in Colorado. Would that be for remote-based consultative services? Whereas the other two are, are local. Um, Cumberland Therapy Services, or do they have yes, but local? My understanding is this one that's in Colorado, there are providers that are local, even though the business, the, yeah, thank you, the main office is in Colorado. Sure, and can you speak to um, the process for determining which of these consultants would be used for any number of purposes? Who makes that determination and? Sure, so there's um, a number of different reasons why we would be contracting out. You may recall that on the budget every year we've been asking for Board Certified Behavior Analyst or BCBA. So um, as you know, students have it on their IEP and uh, there are times where students move in and it's already on their IEP, so this current staff that we have um, are already deployed out, and just like physical therapists, speech therapists, you know, we need the service on top of it, so, and then we also have some specialized programs within White Oak School and Maiden Choice School, where um, we've been using contracted services because it's an early childhood program, so again, depending on the needs of the child, when it says it on the IEP or the specialized program, that's where we would be looking to the vendor if they have that particular expertise or not. Okay, so it would be accurate to say that each of these vendors offers particular areas of expertise versus... Or they might have everything we need and if they are, they can't give us, you know, say one of the vendors can't give us someone and we need for three more kids that have just moved in, <clears throat> you know, we would be asking the other vendors. Great, thank you very much. Sure. Board members, other questions? Mr. McMillian? I'm curious, are we trying to hire these behavior analysts? So we currently have six of them in the system. I think you're at the curriculum committee meeting where we were explaining that, and we have more that are a part of the budget. So yes, we're trying to hire full-time staff that have this expertise, but we have a need that exceeds that. So therefore, we have to contract out. Thank you. Sure. And one of the requirements of this bid is that they have a an in-state office and that their <laughs> providers have Maryland certifications. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you. 
The next item, JBO 715-19, Statewide Foreign Language Interpretation and Translation Services. This is a new cooperative contract for foreign language interpretation and translation services for the departments of communication and community outreach uh, and academic services, offices of food and nutrition services, and office of magnet programs. Uh, approval is requested for a four-year, 10-month contract with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $1,722,000. And this, uh, we're cooperating with the State of Maryland uh, Department of Management and Budget uh, on this contract. Great, thank you. And this replaces an existing contract um, with average annual expenditures of $16,000. I'm curious as to how the Purchasing authority was determined at 1.7 million. If my math is correct, that's quite so a larger. So this is a a contract that offers an entirely new range of services. Uh, I think the the most important of which is the uh, telephonic mm -hmm. service, whereby uh, anybody can call in and at a rate per minute. Uh, receive translation services in addition to the original previous agreement which was basic standard translation of a certain number of documents so I can just quickly go through the offices and and their particular budgets that are uh, the basis for this estimated expense uh, magnet uh, written document translations of $35,000 uh, per year and uh, grant funded uh, telephonic services of 45,000 per year. Uh, academic, or excuse me, both were those were document translations. Academic services, telephonic uh, services of about $65,000 a year. Food and nutrition services uh, translations of about $10,000 a year, and communications and community outreach, uh, primarily transa translations of uh, documents, including the student handbook. Um, let's see. Uh, also, I can share that uh, within the office of ESOL, um, we have interpreters, but we also have 94 languages now. So some of our interpreters don't have all the languages that we need. And what we were finding is um, the first few years we were using the language line, which is that telephonic system he was talking about. We were telling schools, you know, for emergencies only, you know, if a parent shows up and the, the interpreter's not there, you can use it. And now we've expanded that to say, use it anytime you want to speak to a family. So if a parent walks in, you don't have to you know call up the interpreter or tell them come back we can't talk to you now so we're anticipating growth as we grow a thousand students that are English learners every year that we will need both the telephonic the face-to-face -face, because of the 96 languages our interpreters only cover 60 of those and they they can't be available every day um, and so we're we're anticipating needing at least this spending authority based on the growth and how um, many schools have really expanded using the language line since we've opened it up to say, use it whenever you need to use it. Okay. And that language line is available to anyone within the system who may need to use it, who's mm -hmm. servicing S families? Yep, schools and offices, everyone's trained in it. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Sure. Any other questions for members? No? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, the next item is CWA 109-19, Voice Over Internet Protocol Services. Uh, this is a new cooperative contract providing for Voice Over Internet VOIP services to all BCPS schools and offices. Approval is requested for a three-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $1.2 million. Great, good afternoon, Mr. Corns. How are you? Great. Um, so I just have a couple questions here. Um, the transition to voice over IP, I would imagine, would require the purchase of new handsets or new it does. new equipment. It does. Yes. Do you happen to have the breakdown of the one-time cost for the voice over IP 
um, transition versus the annual recurring? Uh, I right don't now. have it in front of me, Ms. And this is uh, this contract is not for the hardware. It's That's not for the hardware. That, that answers my question. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Perfect. Board members, other questions? I did have one other, and that would be the the time frame for implementation. If you have any of the the project schedule. So uh, currently, our uh, our system is bifurcated. We have um, uh, a partial uh, conversion of voice over IP occurring. So we're moving these schools forward as um, I don't want to say as time permits, but as their schedule allows, and that, so we don't hit peak time. So summer is going to be our, our real big um, move forward, and and so we're we're rolling in as we can. But service won't be diminished because we're simply turning down. One and turning up the next. Sure. So um, we we have um, uh, Mr. Vukov has got planning internally that is working to to identify next steps and next schools. Great. Okay. You're going to have a busy summer, I imagine. Uh, uh, a little bit. Okay. And what do you know what the um, targeted end date for full deployment is? I, I can get that for you. It's been a, it, it's really dependent upon um, funding and um, hardware deployment and, and rollover. So I, I can I can get that plan out. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Any other questions? Nope. Thank you, Mr. Okay, Lawrence. the next item, MBU 530-19, purchase of automobiles and pickup trucks. This is a new cooperative contract for the purchase of various motor vehicles for the Office of Transportation. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $250,000. Um, I'll just note that uh, that these items uh, we're recommending that we use a, uh, a government and education uh, cooperative consortium uh, because the, uh, the nine vehicles here were uh, received no bid on the next item for when we for which we solicited competitive bids. So without having any bidders, we found another source to provide these relatively basic, uh, sedans and pickup trucks. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, any thoughts on why we didn't receive any bids on this? It seems like a pretty straightforward. Well, it does seem straightforward. For business. I can share with you that right now it's a seller's market, Is it? and the dealerships that that went with us with the bid and so and came back no bid because frankly they do better selling retail than they do fleet prices. <laughs> Greater margins makes sense. Thank you. Board members, other questions? No? Okay. Moving right along. Okay. The next item uh, we, for which we did receive bids, MBU 51319, is a uh, purchase of various motor vehicles, and this is a new competitive bid contract for the purchase of various motor vehicles for the Office of Transportation. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $1.25 million. Any questions on this contract award? Ms. Rowe? What, what do we determine? What factors go into determining when we need replacement vehicles? Is it a set amount of years or mileage? or? How we follow the Baltimore County government replacement schedule 10 years and 150,000 miles. Typically, we follow that. Occasionally, we have to replace them prior to the 150,000 mile limit because of corrosion and issues, getting parts, and so on. Okay. Great. Thank you. Next okay. Item. The next item, MBU 511-17, purchase of large kitchen equipment. This contract modification will provide for the continued purchase of large kitchen equipment for the Office of Career and Technology Education and Fine Arts and Food and Nutrition Services, other departments and various schools. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $1.4 million, bringing revised total contract spending authority to $3.2 million with four awarded vendors approved by the board in November 2016. Okay. Board members, any questions? Ms. Rowe? What type of large kitchen equipment? We have over 2,000 pieces of large kitchen equipment um, dating back to 1956. Mm -hmm. It's um, values of 5,000 and higher to buy them. So they're ovens, they're warmers, 
their milk boxes, their serving lines. So as they, um, our fixed asset inventory will give us the condition, the age, the repair record, then we make a determination of how many per year we're going to replace. One question or, or comment that would be helpful for the board to see, not specific to this contract, but would be for modifications that we receive to see the breakdown of expenditures by vendor um, when when those come in. If that's okay. information we can um, receive in the future, I'm sure that's okay. easily yeah, available. We have yeah, we have that, that information. Right. Hindsight. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all I had. So the next item, uh, RGA 342-03, Leasing Modular Classrooms. Do you want to do this, Pete? Yeah, I understand this contract modification is for the consent to the assignment of this contract from Modular Space Corporation to William Scotsman. There is no additional funding. The original contract was approved by the board. Thank you. Um, this is one that, if it's not too much trouble for staff to provide the original award exhibit. That would be helpful to see the background. I find myself wanting to see the review the original procurement details. Again, if it's not too much trouble for staff, sure. that would be helpful to see. Yeah, we can do that. We can for do that. future, especially that this one um, was originally approved in 2003. Mm -hmm. So it's helpful to have that history when when sure. considering. Again, this is just a reassignment to to William Scotsman. So. Yes. Um, other questions, members? No? Okay, thank you, Mr. Dixit. Okay. The next contract, MBU 52119, is a competitively bid cooperative contract for the building, for the purchase of building maintenance, repair, and operation supplies. Approval is requested for an eight month contract for option to uh, two additional ones and one year extension with recommended bidder. The amount is 175000 The contract is specifically for the floor protectors for all student chairs. So we are going to buy floor protectors, and that will um, that'll save floor. And the cost in uh, redoing the floor itself pays for this, most of it. Terrific. Are these removable um, That's right. pads yeah. for the, the chairs? Yes. Yes. Great. They cost about 30 cents a piece, mm -hmm. so about dollar twenty for a chair. Okay. File this one under. Why? Why haven't we done this before? Now this is um, fantastic. And I, I did want to confirm um, the numbers of vendors requesting solicitation and bids received. Were there actually 10,525 vendors requesting solicitation? That's because of it being a cooperative contract, and this just being one. Uh, small component of a much larger bid for a wide variety of building uh, and maintenance supplies. Oh, lots of suppliers, gotcha. And 137 bids, and it was awarded to the lowest responsive yeah. bidder. Great, thank you. Okay. Board members, other questions? Hearing none. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. The next contract, ARA 215-19, is for mailing equipment supplies and maintenance. The contract specifically is for a tracking system that allows packages in inter-office mail to be tracked from pickup location to its destination. Uh, this contract is for two years, and it's going to give us the uh, ability to exactly track where any specific item is. Great. Good afternoon. Hello. Remembers any questions? You just went on deck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Moving right along. The next contract, MBU 52419, is for playground, playground equipment. It's a new competitively bid cooperative contract for the purchase of game time, playground, outdoor fitness, site accessories, surfacing, and related products and services. Uh, it will use this contract for replacement parts, repair services to existing back, uh, playgrounds. Okay. 
And the surfacing would also apply to the playgrounds Playground. versus yes. athletic surfaces. That would not be yes. included under this Yes, contract. for the playground only. For playground only. Yeah. Great. Other questions, board members? No? Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. Next, next contract. Yeah. Uh, JBO 70119 is for replacement of Chadwick Elementary School. This is the final package 5A for steel. And uh, the lowest bidder for this contract is Kinsley Construction. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the previous packages were approved by board in earlier meetings. Sure. So curious as to why we only received one bid for there were two package. bids, I believe, but go Correct. Ahead. There, there were two bids, and uh, there were some compliance issues with the MBE component of the other bid, and so that was deemed to be not responsive under our and state guidelines, and so we disallowed it and end up with the one remaining bidder. Okay. Is that an unusual occurrence, would you say? Um, Yes, okay. it happens infrequently. Okay, yeah. so that would not be, um, the information that we receive then would not reflect that occurrence. I mean, it sounds like it's unusual, but in terms of being counted as a bid that we received. In other words, would we In the number of bids. Report, would you well, report yeah, that as in a other bid? words, in this case, by being virtue of being disallowed, it would not show up as a bid. Um, typically, you'll see in almost every case, there are at least two. Right. And so it, this is an exception. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, gentlemen. And board members, do I have a motion to approve or um, for recommendation to the full board for approval of items M1 through M13? Mr. McMillian moves, Ms. Rowe seconds. All in favor? Okay, that motion carries. And with that, we are adjourned. Thank you.